What's up, Cal Gang? Welcome back to some dynamics. So let's solve this problem. So we have a work energy problem here, but it's also kind of a kinematics problem. So we have this two kilogram ball, and it's fired from A uh, at 10 meters a second, right? And it's gonna go up the ramp, fly off at B, and it's gonna land this distance away from the wall. So our goal is to find that distance and the velocity at which it hits the ground. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first equation we're gonna use after I drop my paper is the conservation of energy equation. And so this can be written as T, which is our initial energy, plus our initial potential energy, is equal to our final kinetic energy plus final potential energy. So this is how it's written in the book, but it's just saying uh, kinetic energy plus potential energy is gonna be conserved throughout that. So initially, we have kinetic energy, but we're starting at a low point. So first of all, what are we gonna analyze? Well, how about we try to find, first of all, the velocity at which it leaves B? Because if we find the velocity at B, then it's just the kinetics or kinematics problem to find how far it travels. So we're going from A to B. So we can label these basically A to B. So let's go ahead. So we have initial kinetic energy, right? Because we're moving with a velocity. But we're starting at a low point, we're going up a hill. So we're gonna say that we have no initial potential energy, but we have final potential energy. So in spanning this equation, this is kinetic energy, so one half mass velocity at A squared is equal to one half mass velocity at B squared, plus then B is potential energy, right? Potential gravitational energy. So in this case, it's mass times gravity times height. So then we can cancel out the masses because they're in each one. And what are we solving for? We're solving for velocity at B, right? We want to see how fast we're moving at B. So let's rearrange this equation. Um, first of all, we can move this over to get one half velocity of A squared minus gravity height is equal to one half velocity of B squared. Then all we have to do is take the square root and multiply by two. So you get that velocity of B is equal to the square root the velocity of a squared minus two gravity height. So let's plug in our numbers. So velocity at a is 10 meters a second, so 10 squared minus two, gravity is 9.81, height is 1.5 meters, right? We go up the hill 1.5. All right, so then we find that velocity of b is equal to 8.40 meters per second. So we lose, you know, 1.6 meters per second going up that hill. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve for part two. Uh, so we haven't really got to part two yet. We're still trying to find the distance. So now what we have is a kinematics problem. So first of all, let's write velocity b as a vector, right? So we know that this triangle, you see we have a two times 1.5 triangle is the slope of this hill. So if you were to draw this triangle, we know that this space is two, this height is 1.5. And then if you do the Pythagoras theorem, square root of two squared plus square root of one point, or square root of two squared plus 1.5 squared, you find that this hypotenuse is 2.5. So if we want to break this uh, velocity b vector up into a vector, it's gonna be, we're gonna take, this marker's kind of dead, I kind of just got a new one, but that's gonna be, we're gonna take the magnitude, 8.40, and multiply it by the ratio of two over 2.5. And this is our i component. And then our j component is going to be again 8.40, but then it's going to be 1.5 over 2.5 j. So you do this, you get that velocity b as a vector is equal to 6.72 i plus 5.04 j meters per second. So this is how we're going to use our kinematics equations. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and erase this because we've done it already. So let's do this kinematics problem. So when we're finding a distance, we need to know how long it takes to hit the ground to find that distance traveled. And the way we can use that, so the way we can find the time it takes to hit the ground, is using a vertical equation. So the equation we're gonna use is y final is equal to y initial plus velocity initial y, or velocity initial y times time, uh, then plus one half gravity times squared. So this is our basic kinematics equation. Now we're going to use this to solve for time. So y final is zero, right? We're landing on the ground, so we're going to have zero. Is equal to y initial, which is 1.5 when we leave the ground. Plus velocity initial y. This is why we made the vector here. 
our initial velocity y is 5.04 meters a second. 5 times 0, 0.04 times time. The one has gravity times squared is going to be negative 4.905 t squared. My gravity is 9.81, and then we're going to divide it by 2, make it negative because it's accelerating downward. So then you see here, we might be able to use the quadratic equation, right? So, you know, quadratic equation, I should have to teach you that at this point. So plug that in, negative p plus or minus squared b squared over 2a. You're going to get a time is equal to 1.27 seconds. All right, so then we found the time. So we want to find distance traveled. We know that velocity, right, our velocity in the x direction is going to be constant. So we can use the equation velocity in the x is equal to change in x over change in time. So now we know change in time and we know velocity in the x from this vector equation here. So x, delta x is the same as d. So we can say that distance is equal to velocity x, 6.72 times time, 1.27. We're going to find that distance is equal to 8.53 meters. And there we go, we solved it. So now we just need to find the velocity at which it hits the ground. So like I said, the x component is going to stay the same because there's no acceleration when it's in the air acting on the x component. So all we need to do is figure out the velocity in the y direction when it lands. So we can use the kinematics equation, velocity final is equal to velocity initial plus acceleration time. So we're solving for velocity final when it hits the ground. So we know velocity initial is 5.04 when it leaves, 5.04. Then we know acceleration is negative 9.81, and time is 1.27. So we get that velocity final is equal to 7.0, or 7.40 meters per second. Or, so this is velocity final y, I mean, so don't circle that. Okay, so then if we want to find velocity final, right, we just need to use the Pythagoras theorem. The x component is at 6.72. And then the y component is that plus negative 7.40 squared. Get that velocity final. This equal to 10 meters a second. And then if we want to find the angle, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of some of this. We're going to use theta is equal to inverse tangent of the y component, which is that. 7.40 over the x component, 6.72, and that theta is equal to 47.8 degrees, and we found that angle to be downward from the vertical, or from the horizontal. All right, so there we go, we solved the problem. Um, I erased the answer, didn't I? Yep, I erased the answer. The answer was d is equal to 8.53 meters. Whoops, okay. So there you go, we solved the problem. So thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully this helped. Uh, if you're still struggling with that work energy formula, feel free to check out my channel. I have a whole bunch of videos on it. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.